Hello friends. So here we are to study a new program using OpenGL. That is, this program is to create a cylinder and a parallel pipe by extruding a circle and a quadrilateral respectively. Before we get into the program, let us first look at the main function and then go to each and every function step by step. So this is the main program guys. Before we get into the main program, let me show you how the output will look at the end of the program. This is how the output will look. That is, you, ha you will have one circle and each of the iterative circles will make a cylinder. And you will have one rectangle initially and each of the iterative rectangles will form a parallel pipette at the end. Now let us look at the main program. It starts with int main, int arc v, character arc c. So these are the two unmodified arguments that you will be using in the main program. So next command is printf, enter the sites for the parallel pipette. Now you know parallel pipette is formed by one rectangle and iterative number of rectangles. So for that you will need four vertices. And that's why you have chosen A, B, C and D. The same way for the cylinder you have to first have a circle. So you have to first enter the values of the center and the radius. So since when you have a circle you will have a center like like this a circle and the center will have coordinates like Rx and Ry and the radius will be marked as R. Yeah, so that is why you have used these values over here that is ampersand Rx, ampersand Ry and ampersand R. These will stand for the values center and radius respectively. Now glut in it ampersand rg arc c are again pointing out the unmodified arguments that we have used at the starting of the int main function glut init display mode now this sets the initial display mode and glut single and glut rgb are used over here why and that's because glut single is used to select a single buffer window However, if you fail to mention if you want glut single or glut double, by default the OpenGL will take it as glut single. And glut RGB is for initialization of the colors where R stands for red, G stands for green and B stands for blue. Glut init window size 500, 500. This means that you are initializing the size of your window where you want to see your output. You can give it as 700, 400, as per your wish, as to whichever number you want. Glut create window pipe. Now this name pipe will be shown on the top of the window. If your window is like this, the output window is like this, then here you will see pipe. And this will be 500, 500. Okay. My init. So let us go to the next function my init. Now here in the main function along with glut init window size and glut create window you can also give window position which will determine your window position on the whole screen of your computer. We will discuss about that later. So guys here we are in the void my init function. So this is the first function that we encountered with in the main function. So here it starts with gl clear color. 1.0, 1.0, 1.0 and 1.0. This is nothing but the background color white. So when you give 1, 1, 1, 1, the background color will automatically turn out to be white. So on a white background, you will see your output as I had shown at the starting of this video. GL matrix mode, GL projection. So this defines the property of the camera that views the object in the world coordinate frame. There is something else which is known as GL matrix mode, GL model view, which defines how your objects are transformed in the world coordinate frame. Now here transformed means it can be any kind of transformation that is rotation, scaling, translation or shearing. Next, let's see what is GL load identity. So GL load identity means it replaces the current matrix with the identity matrix. And what is GLU ortho 2D is it defines a unit system which fits into that particular area. Now the area that you have given is 0 0.0, 4, 499.0, 0, 0.0, 499.0, which means it will start if your window size is given as 500 comma 500, like how I'm showing over here. 
Yes. So you know that it will start from zero and extend up to 499. So these will give you 500 values that is starting from zero and end till 499. The next function that we'll have to look into is glut display function display. So here it is void display gl clear gl color buffer bit. So what does gl color buffer bit mean? It indicates the buffer currently enabled for color writing. Again, GL load entity, we had encountered with this in the myInit function and we know what it plays over there. Draw para and draw cylinder are the two functions that we have used and we will look into it in our further discussion. GL flush. GL flush is used to ensure that all the previously issued commands have been completed. Let us now look into the two functions draw para and draw cylinder. So here is the function for void draw cylinder. But to know void draw cylinder, we have to also know what is cylinder. So let us go to the function cylinder first, that is silly or cylinder. So here is void silly. Before that, we have initialized initialize the value of a b c d that is the sides of a parallelopiped and r x r y and r that is the two center values and the radius of a circle now what does number of segments stands for we have initialized number of segments is equal to 50 why is that so let me tell you consider the circle that you want to draw obviously we don't have any function that is going to give us a complete circle or there is no circle function that is going to draw a circle for us. So we know that circle is made up of a number of points. So let us consider each of the points on the surface of the circle. Okay. And using line loop, we will join all these points to form a circle. And that is why we have used line loop in this function. Another thing that is initialized over here is n is equal to 50. That will be the number of iterative circles or the iterative rectangles to form a cylinder or a parallelopiped respectively. Now, void cylinder. Int x, int y, int radius. x and y are the coordinate for the centers and radius and uh, RAD stands for radius. GL color 3F. Now, these three values stands for R, G and B respectively. So since R is set to 1, which means R diagram of cylinder will be a red in color. GL begin GL line loop. I already told you why we use GL line loop. And that is because we have to join all those numerous points present on a circle to make it look like a circle or to form a circle. For int i is equal to 0, i less than number of segments i plus plus. Float theta is equal to 2.0 into 3.1415, that is the pi value, float value of i and float number of segments. So now we need an angle theta obviously for the rotation of the circle and to know the iterative circle's rotation as well. So one, if we give the value of i is equal to one, this formula will be used and one circle will be formed. The next incremented value of i will be again substituted in the formula of theta and the next consecutive circle will be formed like this. So this is one circle, this is the second circle, this is the third circle and so on. It will form, look like a cylinder at the end. Next, we have the values of float x1 is equal to float r cos theta and float y1 is equal to float r sin theta. Now what does these do? Let me tell you. X1 here stands for the values of the new center after the first circle and Y1 stands for the new center value as well. So which means it is the coordinate X1 comma Y1 that will be the new center for the next circle. How is this calculated? Let me tell you. Consider this. Theta is the angle over here. R is the radius and XY is the coordinates of the center. Now, we know that cos theta is equal to x by r, that is adjacent by hypotenuse. So, technically, x value will be r cos theta, and here sin theta is equal to y by r, that is op opposite by hypotenuse. So, y value will be r sin theta. The same thing is written over here. 
the float value of r cos theta and the float value of r sin theta will form the new centers x1 and y1 respectively. So GL vertex of x plus x1 comma y plus y1 are the new centers. Since we have used GL begin GL line loop, it is mandatory to use GL end after every GL begin. Let's next go to the next function, void draw cylinder. Now this function does nothing as the name is suggested, it draws the cylinder. That is, before we draw the cylinder, before we draw the next circle, we should know the distance between the first circle and the next circle. For that, here it is declared as i plus equal to 2, which means when you draw the first circle, you give it a position 0. The next circle will be drawn at a distance of 2 units. The consecutive circle will be drawn with a distance of 4 units from 0 and 2 units from 2. And it will just go on like 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 and so on. So, let us look at this. That is why we have given a 4 over here. For int i is equal to 0, i less than and i plus equal to 2. So I hope you have understood now what does this for loop do. Silly rx comma r y plus i r. So the same function that we had seen a few minutes ago is used over here to draw the next circle. So here it is you have got your second circle and as you as in when you want how many ever circles you can use this function and keep doing so on to form a beautiful cylinder. That comes to the end of the forming cylinder. Now let us look at parallelopiped and how to draw it. Look at this function void para int x1, int x2, int y1, int y2. These are the four coordinates of a rectangle that will be iteratively used to form a parallelopiped. GL color 3 is 0 .0, 0 0.0, 0.0 and 1.0. As I already told you this stands for R, G and B. So what will be the color of our parallelopiped is blue because blue is set to 1. The same method is used over here that is GL begin, GL line loop. So using the line loop, you will form a parallelopiped or a rectangle first and then a parallelopiped. Okay. So it will start from one point, trace through the next, next, next and then next. So this is how it will go on iteratively. So the values of vertices are given here. X1, Y1 x2, y1, x2, y2 and x1, y2. Let us see how to calculate these and how the line traces. So yes, consider these four points x1, x2, y1 and y2. What does the program say? GL vertex to y, x1, y1. Yes, we have already got that point and that is this point, x1, y1. So you know that the line loop will start drawing the line from this point. This will be the initial point. Next it says x2 comma y1. So x2 is over here and y1 is over here. So we have to join this line. Yes. Next command x2 comma y2. x2 is here and y2 is here. So we have to join this line. Okay. Next it is x1 comma y2. x1 is here, y2 is here. So it will move on this way. The remaining line left out is this which will be drawn. Now this is the order of drawing rectangle that is from here to here to here and finally to here. Now again since we have used GL begin, we are using GL end as well. Let us look at the next function void draw para which as the name suggests draws the parallel pipette for us. As we had discussed for circle where we drew each of the circles with the iteration of 2, 4, 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10 and so on, we will do the same thing for a parallel paper as well. That is, it starts with 0 and then 2 and then as and when you keep drawing, it will form 4, 6 and so on. This will form a parallel paper for us. 
That is why we have used the for function for int i is equal to 0, i less than n, i plus is equal to 2. Now let us see the new vertices that will be formed after we start giving the values of i. So the new vertices that will be formed will have a plus of i from the initial values of a, b, c and d. So that is the new values will be a plus i, b plus i, c plus i and d plus i. That will form the new vertices of the next rectangle that is formed after the first rectangle. Now we have come to the end of the program. We used all these functions in our main program. Yes, we did. We put my in it which had all the functions. We used display function which had all the functions such as void draw cylinder, void drop error. And in void draw cylinder we had the function cylinder and in void drop error we had the function para. And we went through all these functions and I hope you guys have understood how to do this function. Now glut main loop is the final function that we are using. This is used because it indicates that it should enter the main processing loop. So guys we have come here to the end of the program which is to create a cylinder and a parallel by extruding a circle and a quadrilateral respectively. Thank you. The following video will direct you for the execution of the same program and to see the output. Now let's have a look at the execution of this program. To begin with we open the code blocks first. Now go to the file Create a new empty file. It's very important we change the name of the file with a .c extension for the code blocks to work. Say the name of the file is para1.c. Now, since we have already typed the program, Let's copy paste the program to our new file. Let's execute the program by running and building. Now let's enter the four sides of the parallel paper. First side, let's take it as 200, 300, 100. And 50. Now let's enter the center and the radius of the circle. 100, 100, 50 to be the radius. The output looks something like this. So we have created the cylinder and parallel pipette by extruding the circle as you can see and the quadrilateral respectively.